Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Tim Hutter and today we're going to turn another influencer trading strategy into a fully automatic trading robot using AI. Then we're going to see does it actually work? Is it actually profitable? And how does it perform over a long period of time? Let's go. All right, so I came across this guy here. Uh, he's kind of blowing up on, on Instagram and he has had two strategies that he shows. Now this is one of them. But as I saw, they are pretty much the same. So yeah, let's just watch the video. And then we're going to code this step by step in PineScript trading view. And then we're going to see how it performs. I lost $65,000 before I figured out my most profitable model. The model is simple, easy to spot on your charts, and it forms every single day. It's called the 90 FCR auto. Now give me 20 seconds. I'll explain exactly how it works. Step one, jump to the hourly time frame. Wait for the 9 a.m. candle to come to a close. Now draw the high and the low of that 90 up candle now jump to a four hour hourly or 15 minute time frame to look for the key level we have it yeah that's something he says four hour hour or 15 minute key level i don't believe in this because the market is fractal so the time frame doesn't even matter and then second there is always a key level go to the chart zoom out go to the left there will always be a key level doesn't fucking matter. a four hour for vela yep right over here let's now drop down to the 15 minute time frame we are now on the hunt for a lower time frame crt we take the high and low of this 15 minute candle we are anticipating that the 9 a.m and 15 minute highs get turtle souped while tapping into the four hour key level then push prices back to those 9 a.m let's see what happens as soon as price closed beneath this parabella gap right here, we form the IFVG. We have also just formed the order block as soon as price closed beneath this green candle. The entry short comes in as soon as both the order block and the IFVG are validated. Entry short, stop loss going to that swing high, final take profits going to those 9 a.m. lows. Now, let's see what plays out. And just like that, full TP was hit. Okay, yeah, that's quite complex, but we can do it. And how are we going to start? We're just going to start simple. And I know you might not remember what you said, but we have to go back to the video every now and then. So basically the 9 a.m. candle, I hope it's EST. I think so. I need to go back. Wait for the 9 a.m. candle to... Okay, he said one hour candle from 9 a.m. I assume that's EST. So we need to draw the high and the low and then we need a sweep. And you know, this is very similar to one of the TTR strategies. I think we can take the TTR strategy, modify it, and then we have the basic logic. And then we need to add the higher time frame and stuff. Let's search for it. By the way, if you haven't seen the TTR strategy when we built this, then go back to this video. You need to see it. It's amazing. I'm going to link it here and also down in the description. I have not saved it here, but I'm sure I have it here somewhere. Now, you see, that's the Asia session and we want to trade London. So... What we do is, that's almost the same, we're just gonna change the times. So the first range, instead of the Asia session, we're just gonna take this first one hour candle, 9am. So this is simply 9 until 10. And then we start trading at 10 until, let's say 12. How does this look? Absolute mess. Yeah, that's wrong. And I think I know why, because the time zone is not being enforced. Let me check something. If I go to 11. Yeah, I think the time zone is wrong here. Because here, what time was it? That's 11. But it takes the Asian session throughout. It's completely wrong. And if I put this to... I don't even know how this can be possible. That's ridiculous. Yeah, still wrong. Okay. Yeah, we're just going to fix it. We're going to use Robocoant AI. That's our own AI coding software. It's like ChatGPT, but much better because we literally built this for coding. So we are going to create a new file. By the way, we also have a free version. Link is down in the description. Okay, we're going to select. Yeah, let's take Claude Sonnet 4.5. And we're going to use plan mode because i need to ask you some questions and trading view workspace now we just take the code here and we describe the problem i don't understand why there's a problem to begin with this is, trading view is just such a dumb platform sometimes yeah so i just have my question i have it here in plan mode just to find out how is it possible that it extends the asia session throughout the full day by the way i've realized we need to use eight and nine and then we trade from nine to 11 probably something like this but still wrong it extends it even though it's not supposed to extend it came up with a theory and how to fix it so i just say yes proceed i accept it i copy the full code i go to trading view i hide this i click here create new indicate the strategy doesn't matter what matters is that you delete everything paste add to chart now you see it is compiling no issues so far 
completed. Okay, now let's see if we can change it here to eight, nine. Let's take 10 just to test it. And that's already the basic version. It looks uh, pretty shit, to be honest. And I know what you say, oh, where's the F, we cheat, R, we cheat. Oh, also, we have to go to lower time frame. I want to use this in the one minute. Let's see if this causes issues. Yes, it does. Now we have a runtime error. We're just gonna screenshot this error because trading view, yes, it is. It doesn't allow me to copy it. Now I just attach the screenshot here. It takes a while to read it, but I think this explains it best. So a runtime error, that's one that doesn't show in the compiler. It's just a different type of, of error that you can have. I've obviously already coded many, many strategies. So I'm used to this. Yeah, because of the buffer limit, because trading is so limited. Okay, it said it fixed it by tweaking the buffer. Now, since this worked, even though it doesn't work in the one minute, but we don't want to lose it, we're just going to go ahead and create a new one, delete everything, paste, add to chart. Now, let's see if it works. No, still, he yeah, has same problem. We're going to take this again as a screenshot. I assume it's because of the objects on the chart because I think I gave the rule that it has to show the visualizations for the past 30 days. And I guess in this view, trading view has a limit for how many days are being displayed on the one minute time frame, like without scrolling, whatever. I don't know the exact reason. It's the only platform, charting platform on the planet that has these problems. Have you ever seen this on a meta trade? No, it doesn't exist. Yeah, still, we need to have another solution. What does it say now? Cannot even copy it. Can I didn't even remember it. 296. Now, sometimes when I'm stuck, I'm just gonna switch to a different AI model, especially if it's just the same issue over and over again. So now let's see what Codex says. It's much slower, but hopefully I can fix it because I'm afraid that when this, this runtime error persists, that we need to abolish this idea and we just need to trade five minute time frame. Let's go. This fixed it. You see, we just have to change the AI model. Now we can use it on the one minute time frame. That's great. Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Now we need to change the time here because it's not this candle. We have to use the eight to nine. Okay, perfect. It's trading. Now this performance report, that's not enough because we only have 12 trades. You need at least like 100 trades um, to see if something works and also I know you're not going to believe me because you have been brainwashed. You believe so much in the PD arrays and the FVG. So we're going to code all this nonsense um, and then prove you that it doesn't make it any better. But then at least you know it. But who knows, maybe I'm completely wrong. I think I have to rewatch another part of the video because he said something about key level. Yeah, let's talk about the key levels here. I have to zoom out for this because many of you just have to be brainwashed. You see, there's always a key level. Oh, wow. It took out this high. You say, oh, that's a one minute high, bro. It's just higher resolution. This is high definition. If I now go to the 15 minute time frame, this is simply a week on the 15 minute time frame. Come on. Yeah, let's go back to the video and look what he said. High and the low of that 90 of candle. Now jump to a four hour hourly or 15 minute time frame to look for the key level. We have a four hour for Bella. Yeah, right over here. Let's now drop down to the 15 minute time frame. We are now on the hunt for a lower time frame here tier. Okay, I get it. I might be wrong. Now, since Nasdaq is always like at the all time high, there's never going to be any key level here to the left. There's only going to be key levels down here. You know what I mean? It just rarely happens. Let's look at some examples. You're going to understand. So obviously, since this was a new all-time high, there's no key level. When it comes to with something like this, then things look different because there's always a key level here. When it goes down, there's always a key level. When it goes up, an all-time high, there's no key level. Here, for example, it took out this low, but you can see there, there was no trade because it didn't retake this low, it didn't sweep it. Now, here is an example where we actually do have a key level because we have a sweep to the upside while the market is bearish i'd say now what we can do is for the higher time frame key level stuff we simply go let's add pivot points now we have to use our brains to calculate something okay we go in the replay mode i argue there's always going to be a key level and i'm going to prove it to you we're going to make it very simple so now we have these pivot points now you say oh you need to go to another time frame yeah we can do this here now this has a period of 10 means we need at least 10 candles between each pivot point. So we have one. Is this true? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10. I'm not really sure, but if we put this to the right amount, we can basically see the higher time frame. Yeah, you know, we're just gonna ask it here. Start a new chat. No, you know what? I'm actually going to... I don't want to confuse it. Yeah, here. But... Okay, makes sense. So if we set this to 15, we see 15 minute pivot points or highs and lows. And as soon as we have this, we can also figure out if there's an FEG or not. But let's say we use one hour. So we put 60. Now these are one hour highs and lows. Yeah, I need to think about this. I say it is completely useless, this higher time fair stuff in this case. But what we can do is currently we are entering when we have a break of structure and you see it is actually beautiful. Now, I believe this performance, it doesn't always look like this. So if you go to the strategy tester, I hope they have fixed it. If I select the past 365 days, Oh, that's actually, wow, I'm surprised. I was not aware that the performance is so great. And now you're going to say, oh, only plus 71%, bro. You need to understand the relation, the correlation of risk and reward. If we just go to properties and we lower it to a normal account size, now we make 71% and are actually outperforming the S&P. That's in one year. It's actually quite a banger. I'm surprised. And this is without the FVGs or IFVGs and without order blocks, we can obviously add them, but are they going to help? Let's say, would they help to prevent this loss here? Is this an FVG here? Yeah, let's watch the video again. You take the high and low of this book again. We are anticipating that the 9 a.m. and 15 minute highs get turtle soup while tapping into the four hour key level to then push prices back to those 9 a.m. So let's see what happens. Yeah, okay. He wants IFVGs. Yeah, we can actually do this. And I have already built this. Let me pull this up. Yeah, this is in our WAP. We have coded almost everything. So I don't have to do it from scratch every single time. But also many free codes are available on TradingView. Now I'm just going to add another one. That's for the IFGs. Now to make it more beautiful, uh, more visually easier to understand. We are going to change some things here. We go to style, paint labels, remove them. Now it's more clear. Now we also have, oh, by the way, I need to save this. So it's true here, we don't get an entry because we don't have an IFG. We can also change here the settings to aggressive and we can remove the triangles here. Oh, that's for the break. Interesting, very interesting. I think we can actually use this. Okay, so here we would have prevented this trade because we didn't get an IFG. Now, do we also get an entry with our super nice winner here? Or are we going to miss it? Let's go into the replay mode. So here we have an FVG and then as soon as price would close below, it becomes an IFVG. But we are already in. Yeah, I'm, I mean, you're just going to miss this trade. Now we have the confirmation. We have already won this trade. Whereas this one only, only here, it actually became, uh, became an IFVG. We can obviously put it even more aggressive. And does it change anything? Yeah, maybe here this one. No, that's nothing. Yeah, you could argue this one here. I would say actually this is an FVG. And then it becomes an IFVG here. So the entry will be exactly the same one. Okay, well, but at least we already have the basic version of the CRT strategy. It's is somehow incredibly profitable. We didn't max it out yet. We didn't optimize it. We can obviously adjust the settings here. We can go for a fixed risk awards ratio or we can go and target opposite side of the range, which is what he has been doing. I would say that's very accurate. Now, in the next step, we're going to add the IFG logic. We're going to make it optional that we need an IFG to enter. Then we can compare the performance. Also, we're going to add this higher time frame stuff. I need to think about something. I say it's completely useless, pointless, doesn't make any sense. Yeah, we're going to do this all, but not in this video. It would be too long. We're going to do this in the next video to make sure you don't miss the next video and also don't miss the code because I'm at the end of the series. I'm going to share the code, obviously. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on the notification bell so you get notified when I upload the second part where I share the code and with all the F. FEG, IFEG and higher time frame stuff. Exactly. And if you have any ideas how to do this, what to look for in the higher time frame, especially if we're bullish and there's nothing to the left, then please let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Peace out.